Our next stop in Japan was almost two and a half thousand kilometers southwest, on the southernmost of Japan's main island, Okinawa. This island was an immediate exercise in contradictions. We arrived in Naha and quickly discovered that the southern third of the island is almost exclusively given over to cities. But up in the north of the island where we were staying in Kunigami, there are small isolated villages that can be found hugging the coastline, and that's almost it. One of the first species of birds we saw on arrival was actually the light-vented bulbul, which is a species very similar in behaviour and preferred habitat to the bulbuls of South Africa, who we saw, and indeed heard, extensively during our time there. This was shortly followed by a bird that I was sure I was misidentifying as a common kingfisher, but, as always, considering the other name for the kingfisher is the Eurasian kingfisher, perhaps I shouldn't be surprised that it was found on this subtropical island on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Our next spot was actually in the town of Kunigami itself, in the form of a blue rock thrush. I initially assumed this was some local morph of the robin, but this assumption was based purely on the reddish breast and was woefully incorrect. And it wasn't particularly long before I discovered exactly how wrong my assumption had been. As a couple of days later, up one of the many varied and disconcertingly precipitous mountain paths available in Okinawa, we met one of the Okinawa robins. These charming little birds are about the same size as a European robin, and their coloration is remarkably similar to that species, although with the ventral and dorsal coloration effectively reversed. Our next spot, thankfully, was one that required very little assistance in identifying, and certainly did not take a great deal of effort to find. The warbling white-eye, also known as the Japanese or mountain white-eye, is incredibly widespread across Japan, but its native range in total stretches from northernmost Russia all the way down to the Indonesian islands. As you can plainly see, the bird is nectivorous and has a rather striking color palette, being olive green to leaf green on the back and green on the forehead to a quite vibrant yellow on its throat and upper chest. But of course, the most obvious and striking feature is the one that gives the species its name, the white ring around the eye. The warbling white eyes, short wings, and frankly slightly dumpy appearance belies an incredible agility when they are moving within the trees. They are capable of extraordinary acceleration over short distances, which frankly I would find a great deal more impressive if it didn't make it virtually impossible to keep these small birds in shot whilst trying to film from a distance. Bordering as it does on the Pacific Ocean, it is perhaps unsurprising that Okinawa has a vast array of seabirds. I'm not entirely sure exactly which of the three species found on Okinawa these are, but I believe them to be the Great Cormorant. And likewise, this egret was similarly difficult to identify. Thankfully, not everything was quite so difficult to identify, and this little egret with northern pintail ducks in the background was comparatively easy thanks to its dark bill. And last but not least of the wading and water birds is the Pacific Reef Heron, which unhelpfully is also known as the Eastern Reef Egret, and in fact comes in two colours, a dark morph as seen here and a light morph which indeed looks very similar to the previously seen egrets. Thankfully their yellow-grey legs do enable you to tell them apart. Around the town of Kunigami are any number of tall structures, man-made and natural, that are excellent perches for predatory birds and some days it feels as though every other telephone pole or TV aerial 
has something perched on it. Most commonly, the common kestrel. As these birds are widespread across Europe, the Middle East, Asia and Africa, there's not really a lot to be said about them that hasn't already been covered. Our next species, unlike the common kestrel, is most commonly found in and around Japan, specifically the Satayama, which describes the border between mountainous regions and arable flat land. Much like the common kestrel, the grey-faced buzzard, which is only slightly larger at up to 46 centimetres or so in length, spends much of its time perched on available man-made or natural outcrops, such as telephone or power poles, But the bird that very much rules the skies of Okinawa is the osprey, sometimes known as the seahawk. While they will occasionally take other prey, such as mammals, snakes, frogs, birds, and so forth, over 99% of their diet is fish. And they are supremely well adapted for hunting underwater prey. They can see fish below the surface from as much as 40 metres above it and will submerge themselves fully when diving from this height in order to catch their prey. And in an adaptation they share exclusively with owls, they have a reversible outer toe allowing them to grasp fish with two toes front and back. All of this footage, whilst it may look to have been shot at an aquarium, was in fact shot at Usena Marine Park, which possesses, among other things, an underwater observatory, effectively a tower built down into the sea, with viewing ports at the bottom. Being able to see species like surgeon fish or triggerfish that I'd only ever previously seen in either zoos or on nature documentaries was a real privilege. Of course, I couldn't help myself, and with the ocean so nearby and quite prone to storms, I did have to indulge in a little gratuitous slow motion footage of waves, disguised thinly as science by observing how these mudskippers managed to cling to the rocks even in the most adverse wave conditions. Our final spot on the island of Okinawa is found only within the Ryukyu Archipelago. And honestly, it feels as though every island within the archipelago has its own name for this newt, being variously called the Okinawa newt, yellow-bellied newt, sword-tailed newt, or fire-bellied newt, depending on who you ask and where you are. As with many other newts, these tend to live in cool, uh, stagnant bodies of water and are often found in and around man-made structures such as rice paddies, roadside ditches and so forth. Unlike the rest of the Synops genus though, the Okinawa fire-bellied newt is more tolerant to higher temperatures due to living predominantly in a subtropical environment. The species also exhibit significant sexual dimorphism, with the females being around 18 centimetres long and the males just under 13, and the females' tails are longer than the rest of their body. Their base coloration is always a dark brown colour, but beyond that, individual coloration is highly variable. And we were lucky enough to observe a number of different colour morphs, ranging from almost entirely black with very little underside coloration, to individuals with spots on their back ranging from almost white to orange yellow. Some individuals even have dorsal and or lateral stripes, which can vary in shade from a deep red to an almost white. The dorsal stripe in particular can extend the entire length of the tail, giving it the appearance almost of being edged in blood, which is rather cool. Fire-bellied newts are poisonous and have no natural predators within their environment, but unfortunately their population is currently extremely vulnerable. Their limited geographic range doesn't help matters, and human intervention is, at best, doing nothing of use when it's trying to assist them, 
and at worst, unfortunately, making matters significantly worse. <laughs>